A transition more than 20 years in the making, the state seized control of Newark schools in 1995 in the face of mismanagement, neglect, and corruption. On Thursday, after years of hard work and upheaval, the Newark School District regains control of its own fate and finances. The outgoing state-appointed superintendent, Chris Cerf, joins senior correspondent David Cruz. I think the first time we met, you were still uh, Commissioner of Education, and it was a very contentious meeting in Jersey City. In fact, our interview did not go particularly well. Yet, uh, I guess two or three years later, you came to Newark as someone who was going to, quote, calm the waters. What was the evolution of Chris Sir from that kind of um, rambunctious guy to the, the peacemaker? Well, first of all, it's great to be here with you, David. I remember uh, that, that interview, and it's the first of many we've had, yeah. all of which have been an absolute uh, pleasure. I think the waters are, are, are absolutely calmer than they have been at certain points, not just over the last uh, few years, but uh, over the last uh, decades uh, in Newark. And I think there are a lot of reasons uh, for that. It's possible that what I brought to the work contributed to that, but I think the reasons are considerably broader uh, than that. Just in terms of local control, before mm -hmm. our time gets away from us, um, that begins Thursday, but it's there is a two-year transition plan under which the, the local district will still be under state monitoring. Is that right? Um, not quite, David. Uh, so local control fully and completely and legally has returned uh, as of February 1st by the most important measures. The school board, which used to be known as the advisory board, is now the full board. The state does not have veto power over its actions. The school board selects the superintendent. Uh, but uh, it was the commitment of the state and, frankly, of everybody involved in this to make sure that this transition happened in a smooth and responsible way. So the transition was accompanied by a plan that, as you suggest, lasts for two years. And it puts in place uh, a number of what you might describe as guardrails, as guidance, as supports to make sure this transition happens smoothly. So there is consensus that student performance is on the rise. Um, graduation rates are way up. Um, and there was this Harvard report that came out that said that um, the performance was up in, in a, a number of areas. And they said that a lot of it had to do with the reforms that were put in place during your predecessor's uh, tenure. Is it time to reevaluate Kemi Anderson's legacy? Well, for, first of all, uh, the premise is accurate, right? That, uh, that what uh, Kemi Anderson did uh, required a great deal of courage. Because it was uh, a tick downward and then a serious tick upward. That's correct. Yeah. And that a lot of the uh, sort of ideas that she implemented, by the way, as a state-operated district, I was state commissioner during right. uh, much of that period. So it was something that whatever uh, 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 mistakes that have been attributed to her, I have always stepped up and said, you better uh, attribute those to me. Right. Um, but the foundations for the successes we are seeing were absolutely uh, commenced uh, during the period when she was here. This $100 million, the so-called uh, uh, Facebook money, um, was it used? Did it have its proper impact? It absolutely catalyzed the, the change uh, that we're seeing, and it has been surrounded by some of the most aggressive myth-making I've yeah. ever seen in the field. For First of all, just to contextualize it, we have a billion dollar a year budget. Yeah. Um, uh, that was uh, with the matching grant, uh, 200 million over five years. So it wasn't as mater it wasn't mat uh, material in the sort of uh, absolute sense. Almost all of that money went directly into the traditional public schools and directly into the pockets of teachers to facilitate a new uh, approach to uh, collective bargaining, a new approach to teacher compensation. Virtually none of it. Uh, in relative terms, uh, went to uh, consultants, and yet that myth has been something that has been uh, perpetuated through the years. I, I will tell you that the successes we've seen today, for example, for example, three times as many African Americans today now go to a school that beats the state average. And New Jersey's no slouch uh, from a national perspective. Not only our graduation rate, but our college attendance rate, our college persistence rate. This happened through a really complicated slog. It happened uh, in a way that inevitably was going to precipitate reaction. It happened uh, uh, in part because of some mistakes that I and others made in a way that perhaps 
caused more friction or more disagreement than was otherwise necessary. But I can promise you this, uh, uh, David, that um, even if all of us uh, uh, had, uh, had uh, a, a different approach to the finer points of engagement or so on, there would have been controversy. I guarantee that because change is hard and change on behalf of impoverished children in every city in America has not happened successfully without causing a little bit of dust to be kicked up. All right, so now what's next for you? Um, the truthful answer is I don't know. I have spent a lifetime uh, committed to uh, public education and committed to the principle that we must not live in a country where a, an individual's future, happiness, income, health, life depends on the circumstances into which she or he is born. I am going to stay involved in that cause. I have not yet uh, allowed myself to consider the particular perch uh, I will be on to pursue that value. All right, so he's available, folks. Chris Cerf, congratulations, and thanks very much for coming on. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.